What's up, friends? Welcome back to another Midday Joyride. My name is Matt, and as you know, if you've been kicking around the channel for a while, I live in northern Michigan, um, and this year, man, Michigan weather has dumped on us more snow than I remember, heck, since I was a kid. It's been nuts this year, um, and I ride motorcycles that those two things don't go well together. There's ice, there's salt, there's all kinds of nastiness out there and it bums me out. <laughs> so I'm, I'm caving in, I'm caving into peer pressure. I'm going to do something that I've, I think I've only ever done once in my adult life. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to ride snowmobiles this year, guys. So today we are going to set up my first snowmobile helmet so that I can moto snowmo vlog snowmobile vlog snowmo vlog i think that's a thing if that's not a thing we're gonna make it a thing because i'm gonna set up the snowmobile helmet so that i can vlog from it so let's get into it so full disclosure um i went snowmobiling last year with my father-in-law he's he rides motorcycles. He's super into snowmobiling during the winter. He's been trying to convince me that it's fun and I should get into it for years. Um, I've been putting it off. I've been saying, you know, I don't, I don't like winter. I don't like snow. I don't like to go be cold. You're literally sitting on a machine in the snow, signing up to go be cold. That doesn't sound like fun to me. I finally gave in and said, you know what? Let's go. Let's do it. I'm going insane. Let's go ride. So he took me out for a day. I had to borrow gear. I only have like a winter jacket. Um, I didn't have snow pants. I had winter boots and like decent gloves. Basically the only winter gear I had was stuff I needed to go shovel the driveway before. So I obviously, I also didn't have a helmet. I had to borrow one. I, I wore my mother-in-law's bright pink helmet, um, which is weird to look back at and think like, oh man, a year ago, I was really comfortable putting on somebody's helmet that wasn't mine. And right now, I you couldn't pay me enough to do that. So that's weird, <laughs> but the world we live in. So I went for that ride with him during the day. It was awesome. We came back and I knew two things. One, turns out snowmobiling isn't that bad and you really do stay warm if you dress appropriately. Two, your helmet absolutely should have a heated shield. So I went out and bought my own helmet, um, said, you know, I'm gonna get into this, we're gonna do this. Winter basically immediately stopped, of course, right after I bought my helmet and I never got to use it. So today we're gonna set it up. This is my helmet. It's a, this is my helmet in a bag. It is an HJC CS R3, whatever whatever that means. I don't really know. Um, it's a helmet, um, but importantly, it has the heated shield port. It's got the little cable. I bought the little adapter to go to his snowmobile, so that I can just plug it right in. And away we go. Um, so to start. We're gonna get rid of this decal. I don't like decals that I don't choose to put on myself. So we're gonna get rid of this. And I'm sure there's a better way to do it than just peeling, but. There we go, easy as that. So now that that guy's gone, it's time to figure out where to put the GoPro. I have this neat little bag of tricks here, a couple adapters. I'm gonna use my GoPro 4. Um, the Hero 4 Silver is what I'm gonna mount to this, just because it's not brand new. So if for some reason something happens to it, I won't be as devastated. I'll get back on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and try to replace it. Whereas if something happens to that Hero 9, I'll be real upset. <laughs> so. Let's figure out where this should live. On my Moto Vlog helmet, on my lane splitter, I've got it mounted off to the side with like a little L bracket, Taz bracket. And I'm thinking that's the way I'm gonna go with this too. I'm just realizing I don't have that bracket in the house. I'm gonna go grab that. I'll be right back, we'll test it. 
a few moments later. All right, so it was a good idea to get this little angle bracket guy onto this curve here. So this is the curve bar setup that I use on my lane splitter. And I set it up and I look at it here and I say, well, no matter how I set this, the camera's not gonna mount in the right way. So my first instinct is to put it, is to set it up like this and to just have it undermounted like that, kind of adjust the angle here to fit what I'm looking for. And I don't hate that, I gotta be honest, I really don't. But my second thought, pop that guy off, is to take one of these brackets that's like the real popular way for moto vlogging to go right on the chin here. And to set this up kind of like that. Issue being, we're all, we're all weeble wobbly. So I ran to town, picked up some 3M skinny tape, and I think I can build up that base to fit and to not wiggle. So we're gonna give that a shot. I've seen, maybe it was Chase on two wheels did it like this once. And if it's good enough for Chase, it's good enough for me. The downside of the build up method, the foam on this tape that I bought isn't as thick as the GoPro 3M foam. So I'm having to build it up farther than like a single piece. adhesive part as little as possible. And I've seen a lot of the guys, you know, snowwheeler dudes that just have the top mount, you know, they mount it. So they just mount their adapter like right here and your camera just sticks up on top of your head. I really don't care for that look just in general. It makes your video not as enticing. It makes you feel like you're actually going slower than you were. And it's not an accurate, as accurate of a representation. I just don't care for that view as much. Yeah, I think that's it. seen and experienced myself the most important part is making sure that it's nice and connected that's not going anywhere so we got the camera plugged into its case and generally on the Dyna I wouldn't use the thumb screw I would replace it with one of these Allen bolts but because I don't know exactly how long the battery life is gonna be in the cold, I wanna keep it easy to get to. So I wanna make sure it's easy to replace the battery if I need to. Always securely fasten your chin strap when wearing your helmet. That, because I've also gotta add this little guy that is the wire keeper for the heated shield. So the heated shield, Plugs in here, this little wire runs down. Glad I actually plugged it in to find out where, because I'm gonna tie it. The directions say you should tie it here. I don't love the hard angle that's putting on it. I'll pull it down about there. It'll set about the same place that my Senna sets on the lane splitter, which is nice. I'm used to stuff being there on my helmet so it won't be distracting.
there we go. It just kind of keeps your cord from flapping crazy in the wind. And then this guy tucks in the rest of the way and plugs in. So now that we got this guy all mounted up, we've got the wire keeper set. So the last thing to worry about is how do I actually get audio without exposing the internals of the camera to the elements? Best way that I've thought of is to record audio externally. So I've got this spare mic with already set up with a foam wind cover as well as the dead cat. It's got this little neat little clippy thing on it. Um, I think this one's a Movo. We're gonna test it. I know everybody loves the purple panda, but I don't have one. I have this one. <laughs> so we'll take this mic and this little iPhone adapter, run the cord through my jacket and out the neck hole, plug this into my iPhone and connect it to a recording app. Um, I found a couple of good ones. I'll run a few tests on it and see what's best and then export the audio separately. And this guy can just live tucked into a cheek pad. So this is a better option. Pulled the whole pad out, ran the cord in from the back, snuck the mic under the neck strap and have that guy live right out there in basically the exact same spot that it lives in the lane splitter just tucked inside the cheek pad the dual covers is the same exact setup i run on the lane splitter so everything should be in place and totally copacetic and good to go so this is it um you can see on the nine looking at me before looking out this will be the angle that you're seeing from the snowmobile so when i'm editing i might tweak it a little i've got you know a little additional brackets i might have to tear this guy apart just to get myself up in the angle that i really want and then i've got the audio recording from the recording app um just ran through my hoodie right now um well outside of my hoodie right now but I think this setup is gonna work. I think that I'm really happy with it, guys. Whew. It's warm. It's real warm. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, you guys into snowmobiling at all? Did this interest you at all? Do you wanna see me actually go ride? I've got some family coming up this weekend that I'm hoping to get out on the trails with. Um, so let me know if that is interesting to you. I'm gonna obviously try to film it and we'll we might make a video out of it. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Um, this is my basically my finished setup. I might have to disassemble this guy and tweak the angle a little bit. But this should be where we're at. So if you found this interesting at all, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to see apparently some snowmobile stuff coming soon. And then as soon as spring hits, we'll get back into dirt bikes and motorcycles. I've got a couple of other secret projects in the works too so you'll see a bit of that coming soon that i'm really excited for and yeah some more dual camera work so that's exciting too um hey right, guys i'm sweating i have to take this stuff off have a good one ride safe and i'll see you later